I'm beginning to feel like the bloody postman. Now don't tell me I'm going to guess what this is. Ticket to London. First class. One way. Somewhere much nicer. Annick. Annick. That's have been a spear of sheep rustling or something. When you get there, you're to report to Superintendent Ellis. When's that? First thing. Well, what about this? Put it on hold. Hang on a minute. I'm three weeks into this, and it won't hold. It'll damn well have to. George Ellis and I go back a long way, and I owe him. Oh! Oh, that's all right, then, isn't it? I mean, what's three weeks spent freezing your ass up in a crane car when we're talking about a friend? Look, if you're trying to wind me up, son, don't waste your time. There's better men than you been trying for years. I'll bet. And while you're up there, for goodness sake, try to remember that they're not... Oh, my God. Be careful, sir. It's a long way down. That hard concrete. You do this on purpose, don't you? Don't think I don't know. Well, it's got to stop. Do you hear me? Meeting's in the sky now, for heaven's sake. Are you sure you've got enough tackle there for one day's fishing? Stop the car. What for? What, man? What is it? I robbed that one. Is that why we've stopped? It's part of my past, that. Brings back happy memories. Apart from getting captured, Vic. Hey, hey. I wonder if it's still the same manager. I think we'd better shoot off, eh? Just in case somebody clocks. Ah, that was yonks ago. Anyway, it's a free country, sit where I like. Did my six years. That's not gonna look too good for me, is it? Hmm? Turning up for work alongside Annex Most Wanted. What's this? It's a bus station. You get on a bus, you give the man some money, and 15 minutes later, here presto, sea houses. I thought you'd have been dropping us off there, Nick. Stick, I told you yesterday you were welcome along for the ride, but I was going to be busy, right? Now, chop, chop. I'll pick you up at the harbour about... about five-ish, all right? All this gear, off and on buses. Hey, I've got no money. Didn't bring any out with us. I thought I wouldn't need any. I thought I was with you. You're more trouble than my kids, do you know that? Here. Buy yourself an ice cream. Hi, my name's Spender. I've got an appointment with Superintendent Ellis. Oh, right. We've been trying to get in touch with you. You're going to meet the governor across at this place. No problem. Where does he live? Beedner. It's a lovely little place. Just don't say. I know. The... I know. See houses.
So what have you got? Salim Patel, worked on an oil platform, catering side. Clive surmises the body had been in the sea for about three days or so. Who's Clive? Oh, Clive Allison, our pathologist. Does Clive surmise that our lad was dead before he went for his swim? Well, he came across some odd-looking indentations about the base of the skull. Doesn't necessarily suggest murder, you know. I mean, there's quite a lot of headbangers on those rigs. In our humble opinion, Sergeant, we think it points to something a little more serious. Well, you'll not be wanting one of these, will you, Sergeant, while on duty? That's right, sir. But thanks for the offer. You've had your people out onto the rig, yes? Three times. Every time a waste of time. Bloody roustabouts. Middle of the North Sea's the best place for them, if you ask me. I'm sure the oil companies would agree with you. Mr. Yellen seemed to think it was your cup of tea. <laughs> you mean I could pass for one of those bloody roustabouts? Well, you do have a certain authenticity. All right, I'll go and throw a few things in a bag. Well, there's no time for that, I'm afraid. They're expecting you at the training HQ in Aberdeen this evening. Take you through the safety procedures and such. You're down as Richard Shepherd, fit as mate. Right, well, in that case, you better hang on to this. Well, hadn't you better hang on to it? In case you need to assert your authority. Your guys have already walked that route. Besides, I don't want any alarm bells ringing should someone decide to rifle my locker. This is your first time on, eh? Yeah. Right. Hey! There's a spare bunk in my cabin. If you can put up with the snoring. No problem. <laughs> you haven't heard it yet. Hi, honey. I'm home. Is that your family? Aye. It's the reason I'm out here. Funny thing, that. When I'm here, I can't wait to get home. I'm back home, I'm itching to get back out here again. Yeah, I know what you mean. Are you a family man yourself? Two daughters. No wife? No wife. Aye, it's funny. People's idea of what life's like out here. I mean, apart from the cash, there's very little difference between an oil rig and a prison. 
clientele's very much the same. And the weather's a bloody sight worse. Right. I'm gonna get my head down. Got an early start. Uh, they're not too keen on people going walk about. Bit hot on accountability at the moment. Ah. Evening. Charming. A shell still wants to be a hairdresser, but the youngest one comes up to me the other day and says, I want to be a marine biologist. How much is that going to cost me for Christ's sake? I wonder how it happened. What? That guy, Patel, going over the side. Him again? Who knows? Who cares? His family, probably. Well, I don't know. Slipped. Jumped. Shoved? Nah, I doubt it. No, I'm not saying it couldn't happen, mind you. It gets like a pressure cooker here sometimes. There's no way on God's earth the gossips would let slip a juicy bit of information like that. Tittle tuttle. Oh, they're worse than fishwives. What do you want to know for? Did he do your money? Just wondered. Well, if it's possible, you're looking for. Pick the bones out of that lot. Right, I'm away. I've got some serious swatting to do. Open University? Ah, oh, we've got the same as at the neighbor's quiz tonight. <laughs> Stevenson. 
think he's a friend of me dad's. How old is your dad? The ancient. He must be. Yourself. You'll have to go round. Why is that? Because there's men working down there. We're well clear. Let's just go round. I'll have to walk halfway round the rig. It's all right for your young pins. I'm getting on. Shift your ass, pal. Let's leave it. Better listen to your mummy, little boy. And then you might get to grow up and be a little man. No. Leave it, leave it. Leave it. You want to be fit for the quiz, don't you? Hmm? Oi! What do you never learn? What? To keep that buttoned. Shows me how to do it. No. He does. I'll show you. Give us a lift to get started. Christ's sake! Keep that bloody thing straight, will you? Sorry. I don't know about you, pal, but where I come from, behaviour like that merits a smack in the bus. Yeah, odd, wasn't it? Had any trouble with him or his mates before? Mates? Yeah, three of them sit together in the canteen. I can't say as I've noticed. Is it normal to work down there? You know, for a fitter's mate, you ask a hell of a lot of questions, pal. Shepard? Yes? Telephone. Urgent. What happened? She was round at your flat. She must have got the keys out my bag and some of your weights fell on her. What the hell was she doing around there? She wanted to show a friend where her dad lived. She probably wanted to show she had a dad. What have the doctors said? Not a lot. Did they ever? We've just got to wait till she comes round. I was just passing like. Sorry to hear about it. That goes for everyone. Well, there's only you and Yelland. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Thanks. How is she? It's a wait and see job. But I can't do that in there. Listen, why don't you come and eat with us tonight? Our Doris does a wonderful mince and dumplings. Yeah, I can see that. I'll give it a miss, thanks. I'm a bit ring rusty at that kind of thing. Ah, well, it's there if you change your mind. I suppose Yellen's screaming for a meet, is he? Ah, you're all right there for a bit. He's busy rehearsing the speech he's got to give. Another tuxedo job, huh? I don't think the Windy Nook Retarians insist on black tie. Uh, it's not a great deal, I've got to tell him, anyway. There's one or two local celebrities worth checking out. Guys who were on the rig when 
how a lad went for a swim. Yeah, it's courtesy of Aberdeen. Aye, uh, I'll get onto it. Can I drop you anywhere? No, I'm parked, not for. Anyway, I, I want to have a walk. Aye, uh, right. Why Alnmouth? Nothing ever happens in Alnmouth. I mean, it's not as if it's at the cutting edge of crime, is it? It's where Patel lived. Patel? Yeah, the lad off the rig. <laughs> Funny name for an oil rig worker, Patel. Well, not if you're an Indian. Anyway, according to Dan, there's another guy who worked on the rig, came from up there. A bloke called Taplo. And he's got a bit of history, so it's worth a sniff. Surely the local coppers will have checked that already. Yes, but I'm not a copper. I'm a fit as mate, mate. No, I was just telling your waiter lad there that I was on the same rig as your Salim, you know. So I thought, well, as I was in the local, I would call in and have a plate of bait, like, and just pay me respects. That's very decent of you, like, uh, Mr... Mr Shepard, Chad Shepard. Terrible business. What do you make of what happened? Uh, I'm sorry. I have to go now. No problem. I can see you rushed up your feet. Not see him? Well, you must have. He followed you in. Who? Slowman. I'll be Slowman. Ex Rampton. He's a right woman. Mm. Oh, somebody did come in, but I didn't get a good look at him. Think yourself, lucky mate. Not a sight for the squeamish. Do you not see his motor parked up? It's that red one. Oh, that's his, is it? Oh, well. As a guy gets washed up on a beach with his skull smashed to a pulp. This old man's running a restaurant there that's doing no trade, and yet he's wearing a gold Rolex oyster that's all but pulling his arm out the socket. And he gets a visit by a part-timer from Rampton driving 35 grand's worth of Italian muscle car. Hmm. Could be an interesting day. You don't think you're taking this just a little bit too far, do you? I'm telling you, Spen, that this guy is a real life-taker. Used to be called the magician because he kept making people disappear. What's his form? You name it. Torching places used to be his speciality for the insurance. Till one day he didn't quite get out quick enough. Face was all burnt, intensive care for months. He's up or fried. Did you not read about it? No, I don't think it made the London papers. Is he liable to be tooled up? He always used to be. Better keep a safe distance then, eh? About a hundred miles should do it. Sloman looks almost manageable when he's that size. Right. Hey, what? They're dropping something off. Some guys in a van. Whoa, whoa, take it easy. Only brought a half a dozen rolls of film. Yes. What? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Great. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, bye. 
She's conscious. She's gonna be all right. Oh, great. What are you doing? What do you mean? Well, you're not stopping here, are you? This is just a job, you know. She's kin. Yeah. 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 I'll be about an hour, all right? Do you know how to go on with this lot? Don't worry about it, man. Get yourself away. David Bailey, you teased. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? What's that behind your back? What's what? Where? Oh, you mean them? <laughs> I can't eat them. Why not? Because of my diet. Oh, right. Well, never mind. No problem. Listen, you. If you're going to be spending time at my flat, I want to be there when you do, all right? Hmm? Dad, you never are. Looking for something. For some body. No, I was just admiring your car. Um, I was just passing and there it was. Beautiful. There's no path for three miles around here. That's why I bought the place. No, to see that, you'd have to be sitting in those trees over there with a pair of binoculars. Or something. Hey, listen, I'm sorry. I mean, you want your privacy? That's cool. I can understand that. I'll just get my ass awesome. out. Insane. Can't shoot a guy for admiring your car. I'll show sure blue spotlight.
Jesus, what a fright. Get in here, would you? You didn't I? Where the hell have you been? Hmm? I ran out of film, I had to go buy some more. Well, get these things untied, can you? Take it easy. You look you're still alive. Well, that proves something. I'm not quite sure as to what. Shh, shh. That's it, Lake Nell. We're dead men. You wouldn't. Would you? Did you get a look at those other guys? Probably the same geezers come round to see him this morning. What geezers? I don't know. I didn't recognise them. I photographed them. Oh. <laughs> Not as daft as I look. Well, in all honesty, you couldn't be, could you? Not sleeping business. Insomnia. Me, yeah, off and on. Tonight it's on. Must be a bloody nightmare, that. Oh, no, it's not a nightmare, Stick. If it was a nightmare, I'd be asleep, wouldn't I? Hmm? I think it's guilt keeps you awake. Guilt at your chosen occupation. I mean, it's not as if it runs in the family. Your father wasn't a cop. Well, your father wasn't a villain, was he? He was a crane driver at Parsons. Still is. Daft bat. Anyway, I like what I do. And I happen to be quite good at it, which is more than can be said by your chosen profession. I don't know. All right, what do you think was your best touch ever? Hmm? Your finest hour as a blagger. Off the record. 
winter, 1974. All them fella remember. No alarms. <laughs> I think that was the happiest Christmas I ever had. If just one of them jobs had come off. Just one. Been a different story. Bought a nice little house. Sent the kids to a decent school. No worries. You worry? Of course I do. <laughs> what about? Al Keynes. Well, go on, I'm intrigued. What do you worry about? If I'm in an underground car park, what about the working life of concrete? If I'm sat in the bug, somebody's waiting to come in, I kind of get a log to flush away. Just the usual. Not worth worrying on a grander skill. Now you can do about out. I worry, you know. Worry all the time. Day and night. About all kinds of stupid crap. But you know what I worry about most? You know what keeps coming back time after time? Yeah, never mind. It'll keep. There you are. And keep that closed, mind. What are you? What have you got? Good selection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got any Michael Nyman? Nyman. Mm. Nyman. Richard Clearman. Oh, no, I'll see you. You want the mine? Nah. See you there. There you go. Thought I would make it, didn't you? Go on, admit it. Where did you get these developed? Just a mate. Why? Well, the quality's not very good. It's understandable. Had to do them in the dark. You did. I was there watching. Have you cleaned your teeth today? Because I think I'm going to give you a great big slobbery kiss. No way. Just before you out here. What? That's not
old mate's getting a right kicking downstairs. I bloody was. Knew the right answer as well. Harold did his back in on an exercise bike. Ugh, bastards. Now I've got a face like yours. Hey, you never did say. I'm saying, you never did say. What? About your face. Domestic. Uh. What are you listening to? Poetry, mate. Poetry. Poetry? For fuck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I never did like the look of you. Ah! going on? Not a sightseeing tour, I take it. This bastard's a copper. That's what this is. Go on, ask him. Yeah, that's right. I'm a copper. Now, let me tell you what these people are about. These guys are drug peddlers. It's what they're doing right now. Ripping it out the guts of the rig and sending it on its way to the streets. You're not swallowing that crap, are you? 
I've always been a sucker for a good yarn. Certainly explains a lot about your pipe fitting. Half a ton of heartaches, eh? Yes, there would have been a whole lot of sniffing going on if that was had made it to the mainland. How are they getting it ashore? Well, not through custom, surely. They're tougher on us coming off here than they are with anybody else. In those. They stuffed the gear in, welded up the ends, and lobbed them over the side. And a boat would come along, hone in on a bleep, and fish it out. <sighs> Pay the gas bills for a while, that lot, eh? There's enough there to buy them bloody gas board. All right, no unauthorized calls, OK? This thing's not finished yet. OK, you've got it. Hey! I thought all coffers were faster! They are! You'll be pleased to hear we've broken a link in a massive intercontinental drug chain. So, well done us, eh? Mm -hmm. They welded the drugs into the rig while it was dry docked in the Bay of Mexico. Then they just sat back and waited for the oil company to drag it across the Atlantic for them. Crafty beggars. Old scam. Just a different kind of Trojan horse, that's all. Run the distribution through the Patel's restaurant chain. Well, that makes sense. I've often wondered how those places survive. What about young Patel? What happened to him? Nobody's talking. Not even his father. They're all terrified of Sloman, apparently. And he's not talking either. Rather fortuitous piece of luck, though. Patel being washed up outside my back door like that. Otherwise, we'd never have got to the bottom of this. We. Oui. Would you care to see the menu? No, I've got to be somewhere. I've got a date with a lovely young lady. Not too young, I hope. Oh, no. She's almost 11. <clears throat> My place next week, all right? And this time, I'll be there. Promise? I promise. 